everybody and welcome to episode of Nick and Sergio's fun watch list and we're here today reviewing the semi-finale of La Mastraga the semi-finals yes so we're getting back into the swing of things uh this episode will probably be about a week late sorry about that but thank you for bearing with us and we're so excited to be talking about this episode because it was a pretty exciting season finale would you say yes (laughs) <laughs> I'm still processing the episode and, you know, sort of, why don't we just get into it? Because th- this finale, what happens at the end, who the top four are, like, there's so many questions I have. Johnny comes in. I really like this look for Johnny this week. I like both of Johnny's looks this ones, week. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's looking real cute. And he announces that the challenge of the week will be a runway themed around La Mas Monja Coronada. Uh, mm-hmm. which is the crowned, crowned nun. nun, which I knew nothing about. Can you give a little context for those at home who I don't know? I knew nothing about it until Johnny mentioned <laughs> sort of the history of the nuns who would dress up and to basically die humanly and become a nun, and then when they would actually die. And I was not aware of any of this. Good for the nuns, I guess. <laughs> Uh, yeah, good for the nuns. We get a weird little mini challenge with uh, a certain a paint, paint company. company. <laughs> it's like which... Pantone or... Yeah. Uh... I didn't understand what was happening because I, I was like looking away for a second and I heard them talking about like painting and mm. I thought they were, I thought it was like a makeup brand. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and then I look at the I screen saw... and it's like a well, paint Well, I can. thought it was a canister at first and I was like, oh, are they collecting donations? You know, like, oh, yeah. they, I was like... Is this like a paint company that's trying to collect donations for like an organization? And I realized I was like, oh my god, no, that's a bucket of paint. It was just paint. It was just paint, which is a little bit weird because they were talking about how that paint color can be any color you want if you look at it like, and it's like that's every color and every single light when you paint a wall, like it will look different. Yeah. You know, at, at any point, if there's no sun or there's sun or it's like. I think or, you know. they said we want to do a mural mini challenge and they said I bet we can get a paint company to give us money if we <laughs> do that. But the cool aspect of it is they do bring in a, a real muralist. Her name is Queen Skittles and she comes in and uh, she's fully a muralist. <laughs> yes. But I feel like if they just said she was a muralist, no one would probably check. I feel like if they would just say she's an artist, everyone would just believe it. Mm, yes, she looks like an artist. So this is a pretty inconsequential mini challenge. They pair off into little duos. It's uh, Fifi and Lysa. It's Paper and Santa. And it is uh, Hidden and Greta. And they do these, like, I don't know, kind of cute little paintings. I was not... We didn't realize how long this episode was going to be. So when they started doing this, I was like, well, this is going to be a long episode. Yes. Uh... I also wouldn't call these murals because they were just on a little. First, they said they were on a canvas. They said doors, and I was like, they did say door to hell. Yeah, yeah, I was like, those are not doors. First of all, they're too wide and they're too short. Those are not doors proportionally. They could be like a door for like a a little hobbit or something. No, they were just a piece of plywood. That's what they were. Did it have canvas on top of it? No, it was was just literally just a like. I think it was just one color, or like, mm. I don't even remember. Which one was your favorite? Well, I'm looking at them right now. <laughs> Who would have you made the winner? I, you know, I would probably say that um, Paper and Santa's when was When you look kind of at it strongest. again, it's like the most, it's the strongest one. Like, of course, they're both artists. Mm-hmm. They both know how to work with different materials. So, yeah. of course, they were going to win. I told you from the beginning, I was like, right away, you, could, you already know that. Uh, Fifi and Lysa are gonna do the worst one because you can't you can tell that they're not as creative as paper or Fifi's Santa's not creative. Okay, creative. I mean in terms of like working with your hands, did you not see the season where Fifi did her outfit there? Uh, regardless, yeah, I guess they're all technically doors. <laughs> are they doors? I don't know. Those are not doors. I'm sorry. I work in architecture and I can tell you those are not doors. <laughs> You went to school for this. I went to school for this, literally. (laughs) Just to know what a door is. Okay. Well, anyway, I guess it doesn't really matter. (laughs) Paper and Santa do indeed win, and they win nothing. Well, they won 10,000 pesos. Okay, great. They got a little tip. And they also won 
something else, like a small thing. Some paint. <laughs> yeah. I think I they got some, some paint. Yeah. I did think it was pretty boss that uh, Paper was talking to Queen Skittles and she was like, you're not going to be able to do a gradient with this paint because it's acrylic and it's not going to blend so together. Fast. And Paper was like, you just fucking watch me do a gradient. And then made a really beautiful gradient. <laughs> it looked flawless. Unrelated to the mini challenge, there's then a reward where oh, everyone gets to call I their family. I would have just family. given the reward to the winners. Also, it's the very end of the season. Weird like, time to be calling you're home. You're already past the point where you want to see family. You're like, it's the last episode. I think that they were trying to pair of like, you're going to draw a door where you're like, showing your inner emotions of how you're feeling. And then it's like, and when you have you week like that, we're going to then have you go through like a family conversation and then you're going to come and stage, you know, it was like they, I think they were trying to do too much to like make them break in a way so that they could like be reborn during the challenge. Cause that's the, the runway that is kind of like kind of similar situation that was yeah. happening. Like, but at the it same is. time, there's nothing incredibly compelling during these phone calls home. I would yeah, say... Yeah, it, like, made no sense. At this point, all of those families already know that this girl's made it to the end. Yeah. Like, I... If it would have been mid-halfway through, maybe... That would have been way more interesting. Like, or, like, two-thirds of the way through. Oh, and also when just you miss one. your family the most, and it... Yes. And it seems far away. It should have been a prize. Like, a minute challenge, and the win is you get to call home. Yeah, and then you get to have that great moment of, I don't need to call home, girl. You can have it. Okay, Jinx. <laughs> fun fact she did call home they cut it out ask me about it um <laughs> we get right into the runway after this uh weird series of <laughs> events and maka comes out i really like this look this like robot arm she's got yeah you're mad she's wearing a tank top it's not a it. semi-final look but sure this is like what i would have want to see her from her on the first episode but okay she looked great the first episode which one was that one that she was just wearing? I think it was the pink ugly. blazer. It was great. It, it was fit her perfect. She was not wearing something. I like her now. I really appreciate her. And I, and Who she's are you having, trying to convince? She's having fun up there. <laughs> <laughs> I think she looks wonderful. Raquel looks beautiful as well. She's got a sheer like uh, dress with her titties out. And she's got a crown on. Yari <laughs> is wearing something that you kind of called a letal look. Oh, she looks like letal With these two. little ant- antlers. Yeah. She looks cute. With her hands. I think so they were antlers. So she's also doing uh, Abby-esque season three. They were antlers. They looked no, hand-like. hands. Look at them. Where are you going? They're hands. What are you doing? These, babe, are antlers. The, isn't that a hand Look like, at the point going like this? With the three fingers that it has? I know, but they're hands. They're antlers. Well, they look like hands. They do look a little like hands. Um... Letal kind of saved the best look for last. I love how prismatic and sparkly this is. And yep. she's doing these weird um, sort of face pieces all season. Just weird little appliques that are kind of floating around her face. And that's a trend I would like to see catch on more. Uh, girls covering their face because they're ugly? <laughs> you Okay, Letal. Sergio thinks you're ugly. That's no. his words. That's, what? That's... <laughs> Let's I think play it back. Think, play it back. <laughs> I think play it back slow motion. Oh wait, this is a different episode. That was this burrito burrón. Uh, I am just saying that for her it makes sense because she has a big face, so she tries to like conceal it and like make it smaller. Hmm. So I appreciate it. No, she looks great. And then um, we have our the best this season. I don't know. That Buzz Lightyear was great. The Buzz Lightyear was really good. Maybe I take it back. But the Buzz Lightyear was full cosplay. This is like an original yeah, creation. So I'll give the edge to this one. And then the guest judge for the week comes out. It is Johnny Kaz from Grupo Firme. And you told me they're kind of like a cumbia band or... Well, they're more like a Norteño band. Oh, okay. So they're more... I think it's one of the bands that are more popular. Like, is it more traditional in the northern parts of Mexico? Mm. But I remember Grupo Firme from, like, years ago. And I don't remember this person. So I'm sure this is, like, a new member. Maybe he's, he's like, new. a new main member. And well, like, he's adorable. He was a great guest judge. I loved his outfit. I loved I love his that comments. He, wa- he loved the show. And the comments that he did, he did them because he knew what they were going to do for yes. the show. He, so he knew what he was doing. He was pretty hard on them. But it was coming from a place of, like, I, I know what this show is. And I care about it. And so. I know what's expected. Yes. So. I really liked him as a guest judge. Thank you, Johnny. We loved you. Moving on to the runways, Greta comes out first. She's kind of got like a little wobbly headpiece going on here. It's just like falling apart right away. Like literally instantly, as soon as she like started moving, it was more like 
we can tell that you're thinking of how that thing is like falling off your sure. head. Sure. Yes, it, it, you could see the distraction on her face. But what I will say is I think everyone had a little bit of a wonky time getting down the runway yeah. before the reveal. I do this appreciate week. that she made it at least to the center of the stage <laughs> before she under like revealed herself. Yeah. Because every other girl like didn't even didn't even reach the middle part before they had to drop everything because it was so bad, like heavy and yes. you couldn't move. So. And what I will also say, and this is obviously not coming from a place of bias for Greta, because I was pretty clear that I, I thought she was probably the bottom last week. I think that if she had been wearing what she was wearing underneath, if she was wearing garments like that all season, I okay. think she would have had a much smoother much ride to smoother the end. Ride, yeah. Because this was like this outfit was what I thought I was gonna get from Greta all season. I thought the shape was really interesting. I thought the fact that it was like a couple of different reveals. We see even later in the episode, there's a third reveal where it's like just a bodysuit under there. I thought this was really great. Yeah. She looked pretty. Yeah. It moved well. I just think that she's relying on pretty. She and... is relying on pretty, but this garment but it's is like not have... relying on pretty. But It's not. Uh, this yes, was an inventive is. garment. Mm, it was. She still has a pretty face. That's literally what I'm saying. Like, it, like it doesn't matter what you wear. Like, even if she tries to be spooky, like she looks pretty. I'm like, what? That, like, ugh. She didn't look spooky. If that's the only critique we have for her, then great. I agree. <laughs> I think that this is the best she's looked all season. And even though I was pretty well, annoyed, oh yeah, this is the best she's looked all season because then that get, leaves you hanging with wanting more. That's true. Um, it's true. I, I I like this look a lot. Good job, Greta. That's what I have to yeah, say. Yeah, good job. Fifiesta comes out next. And the the one thing I will can say... I, can I, you can go I first. say something? You go first. How dare you put hidden mistake in the bottom for wear, literally wearing the same outfit where you have no reveal because it's just a mask and it's like literally... A body that with you just with the lights flip and the out. veil. Is that you what you're know? Talking yeah. About? With the gear so how do you put that in the bottom and then you put her as the winner of the episode? I mean, but babe, is that really a fair comparison? Because in hit terms it, of hit... what they did, yes. But then I do have to say that what she revealed, Fifi to. revealed to something that was very fucking amazing. It was she elevated. Stunning, so. It was so cool. Yeah. This is what I have come to expect from Fifi, and she had a. Sort of a weak couple, a couple weeks, of episodes yeah. in a row, yeah. So I'm glad that she's back on top. It's like star strong and strong. You know what? That's how you win the That's season, how you girls. Win the season, yeah. <laughs> um, I did think it was funny that she just straight up made out with Toxico, and it was like the last episode, oh, yeah. and I was like, wait, we could the be do- that they all we waited, could be doing this every week. <laughs> the fact that they all waited until the, or she waited until the very end, and she's one of the only ones that did it. It's like I would have figured I out. Have to say, I would have figured out a way to make out with Toxico every week. I, I would have been have like, this say, week, I my Guillermo del Toro character is making out was with able Toxico. To do that was Peke, right? She also kissed. I think one Peke of them. did kiss one of them. Yes. And it's like you could have done that from the beginning. Like you know, Look, it's not new that you. That's can do what that. they're there for. You're all in a COVID bubble together. You should be making out with each other. Well, I don't in know my opinion, in a COVID bubble together. But... <laughs> Uh, next coming to the stage is paper cut and this is this is some good classic paper cut adapting what he does well into the challenge i think out of all of them paper cut sort of showed what paper cut who paper cut is and i think he delivered and you know i made a joke while we were watching that i was like well if you've already done this show of course you're gonna be good and you know and it just made me just want I wanted to see him in an all stars rather than see him in a regular competition. Yeah. Because we already knew he was strong from his season. And then once he got eliminated, he got really famous so quick and you know, just in terms of having the resources is so much different. Oh, it helps. A and lot. so I feel like I think that it's a disadvantage it was a disadvantage for all of the girls this season to have paper cut. And so that's why I was like, I just wish she would have gone to an all stars instead. That where I feel like fair. If Paper Cut had gone to an All Stars, I think Paper Cut would like could still win in All Stars, even against oh, yeah, all the other ones. You know, so I that's why I'm like this was too easy for Paper Cut. That's what I'm just saying. Like this season was too easy for him. To, he just flew by, a little bit. You know, like he was never really. It was only one episode. Like I mean, but he was just so robbed last season. <laughs> I know, but it's like 
people get robbed all the time and you don't see robbers giving their money back. <laughs> I liked when he turned the cross around and it was like fire on the yes. back and then he put the fire down the, by the flowers and then that lit the flowers on fire which turned him into the Antichrist? I, yeah. Is I that think, what he was? I think that's what he, yeah, yeah. he was. Antichrist. I love this look underneath. Uh, this was probably one of the spookiest looks of the week. Yes. Yeah. I liked it. Cool. Good job, Paper. Um, congrats on being really good on two seasons of La Mas Track. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the stage, we have Lysa Sansusi. And I think that talking about having a nice like build throughout the season... She's been consistent in the challenges, but her runways have been consistently improving. And she's been my favorite. She's been among my favorites on the runway for like the last two or three episodes. And I think this is no exception. Yeah, I think she, because all the good ones were gone at the end, she was able to be more noticeable. (laughs) What? You're just just savage. It's fine. I I love it. I'm just saying that (laughs) if these are the top six that we get from this season, then we'd have to talk about them. Sure. Honestly. Yes. You know? But you didn't think this was a stunning garment? Oh, no. This was amazing. I think it has so many flaws in the way that it was perceived as an audience member when she was walking. And, you know, so I do have to say I love the colors. The colors were cool. You know, like, (laughs) I think that's what Raquel was saying. The baby pink, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And giving them the story. Um, No, I think she looked, I mean, she looked stunning. I'm just joking. Um, And, yeah. I think she looked good before and after. There was an awkward 30 seconds where she had revealed everything from the initial dress except for the pink headpiece. And the pink was clashing so hard with what was being revealed underneath that I was just like, <laughs> you you needed to do that wig reveal like at the beginning of this rather than at the end. Yeah, I agree with you because you did say that. And for the lo- like most part of the reveal, well, like, she that took, was big thing. And also she took everything to reveal else into first. an ugly ass wig. I liked the wig. No, like that's my other thing. Like if you're going to reveal, why are you revealed to an ugly ass she wig? She revealed like into that? a wet wig that she could perform in. It looked good. It looked good. That wig looked good with the garment that she revealed into. I will stand by it. Lisa, I thought you looked great in both garments. Yeah, no, she looked great. (laughs) She did. I'm just being honest. You have to be. I'm too nice, so I'm glad you're here. Next up, Hidden Mistake. And speaking of, like, weird little contraptions that Hidden walks down the runway in, this is kind of a repeat. Speaking of not being able to walk, literally. This is the third girl. No one can walk this episode. No one can walk. It's pretty funny. They're like... These little wheels at the like bottom were really cracking me up. They like can't even move their legs. They're always looking at the floor they're to make sure to they're not. Crutches, you know. Like crutches, mm-hmm. you know. It was it was a little unfortunate because I felt like once the reveal started, this was one of my favorites of the week. Because once she got out of that like weird little, I would what would you even call that first thing she was wearing? Armor. That armor, yeah. Once she got out of that, it was like peace. By piece, by piece, oh, she yeah. was like. I did. Love... It was like a Kleenex box. It was like, <laughs> like a magician. She yeah. was just like taking it was so pieces cool. so naturally, like, and that's why I don't like that. It was this one was such a, a armor that like was so heavy and like so it didn't really go. I don't. I hated the beginning, but once she started to just like remove things like nothing, that was great. Yeah, I didn't really like the reveal under, but it was okay. Yeah, it was. I mean. It was all cream, and it's just kind of hard in a finale to do all one color. Yeah. But I like the wig. It was like very Lady Gaga, Judas. No, Alejandro. It was the Alejandro hair. Yeah, it was the Alejandro hair. But the thing is, like, I you can tell it's a wig. Like, I wish, like, she would have, you know, like, Doing there's some, a like, bit of a wig yeah like, there's a bit of a wig line happening it's like you know lady gaga has that line as well like very marked but it's like it's in the detail of like bringing something like not really baby hairs because that's not it but it's more like bringing the shadows to yeah you could feel like it's a hairline yeah that's just slicked back but at the same time i like the blood i like the special effects of the candle when she was praying i thought there was cool things in this yeah yeah okay well good job hidden uh we loved you all season i liked this look as well Next up, coming to the stage, we have Santa Lucia, and she is a, like, nun who is crowned. Was very evil. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the main was comment the she joke. got was yeah. <laughs> she was evil when she started, which is kind I mean, of... she, like, li- that, that was the thing with... 
Santa Lucia, the entire season, is she <laughs> gave us evil. And I like that. I like that I she has a brand and she that. sticks with it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm a spooky girl, so I like a spooky girl. Um, I think a, a couple of the times when maybe the garment wasn't the most exciting, I just liked that she injected so much of her personality into it. I think I think this is no everyone, exception. Everyone this season, she was the most consistent in who she or she knew who she was. Like Very. I can tell that about everyone this season. She was the one who constantly was like, "I know who I am," and she did every she did every challenge her own way. Yeah. And so I do appreciate that a lot. But this was pretty cool. We had like a book that got lit on fire. That was a great yeah, we special effect. Fire. We had some reveals. Uh, I didn't really love the garment that was underneath. Was my only problem. Like oh no 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 no. I no, like no. the wig. I like the makeup. I didn't like the the bottom down. I was like uh, yeah. What is happening? Those fucking boots we've seen on season. <laughs> Um, Going from cream into black, even though the stoning matched, they just felt very disconnected yeah, to me. Yeah, it's like those houses in the U.S. that are so popular. They're like black and white. Oh, you are so contrasty. They're so ugly. Yeah, you do not want to be in the uh, car when Sergio sees one of these houses. He will grab the steering wheel. Can we put the wheel. doors <laughs> of the mini challenge in those houses okay. right here? I will <laughs> find a picture of a black and white house and I will There's put so many. the doors from the mini challenge into the picture. Just Everyone for you, can babe. Vote their best house. <laughs> okay, everybody in the comments, vote which of these three houses you think is best. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and that's it. That's the last <laughs> runway uh, of the whole season. Let's just vote on which house is better and like forget about who made it to the top four. <laughs> that's basically what they did. Because um... <laughs> that's what like they you know. So we go into Maka. Kind of like telling everyone what their mas and menos are, and she's like, "Just tell me who you want in the finale." Which she says, "I don't no want a mas sense. and menos." Yeah, no, I don't mind this. As no, I I will defend this as a thing for the semifinals. Who cares who your mas and menos is? Who do you think needs to be there? I know, but it's like let me just explain it in a better way sure. because they did that. Then they brought all the girls, and then they made them all lip sync for yes. no reason because that did not matter. They just picked the girls that were, like, set by the three judges, and they just picked one random off girl mm-hmm. as the fourth one. So, like, it didn't even show, like, a, like you know, uh, results of, the like, the uh, scorecard. Yeah. Like, nothing. I, so, it's, like, it was so messy, and I think it's so sad because I think that the way that it was done, it really gives, especially one girl that, you know we've talked about like she's getting so much hate and i feel like even in this end episode like she made it to the top four but like it was not done correctly that i feel like she's gonna get even more hate because yeah the producers kind of set her up for that unfortunately let's let's stop tiptoeing around it let's talk about who the three mentioned by the judges are yeah because first of all, Raquel chooses, and she says that Lysa Sansusi must be in the finale. Must her Britney be. was so good. Her La- Mas Famosa was so good. I agree. Yari says it absolutely has to be paper cut. I happen to agree with this. So this is why I'm saying I don't have as much of an issue. And then uh, Letal, who had a group orgasm with everyone over Fifi's look tonight. Uh, Which is funny because she picked her because of her makeup. Because, they're you know, they're doing like... Yes, they are doing it that way, as we determined. And you loved her makeup? <laughs> I mean, I did like her makeup this episode. She looks stunning. She did look really good. But, um, so that's our three that we sort of know, maybe don't know, are going into the finale because then they're asked to... Like, they made it so obvious. And it's like, well, they already picked those three. That means that... So then they're... They have to say because you're the judges. They're the ones who are voting. Yeah, but... That's why it doesn't work. That's... It's well, not like RuPaul. Like, when I know, RuPaul but asks you're leaving... who... I know. Who, you know, because RuPaul will make the final decision, like, fuck y'all, whatever y'all think. Sure, yes. But what I'm saying is, if the lip syncs that we go into, mm-hmm. we do three lip syncs mm-hmm. with, surprise, the pairs that they did for the mini challenge, which... That I, was a gag. That was, that I, was a very I fun... I was very yeah. amused, and I was like, oh my god. I'm but, glad that we at least did not skip through the mini challenge. Yeah, because mm-hmm. obviously they're picking their mini challenge... To be with someone, partners they, to be the, someone that someone they they're close with each other, yeah. So setting it up so that they have to lip sync against their friend was such a gag, and then we very quickly find out that that that's that those it lip doesn't syncs, matter. Who cares? It does not fucking. Matter it did not mean whatsoever. anything because <laughs> we watched three lip syncs and they were all perfectly fine lip syncs. They were perfectly fine lip sync. Lip they were by syncs. what's her name? I do have to say that Becky I like G. Hidden's lip lip sync and I'm like, well, I guess that didn't really do anything. The, the lip sync, if you're not gonna 
if the lip sync's not gonna in, be it's included in the what, final score, then don't show happened, me the lip sync. It's literally what happened in the auditions where they're like they put them all to lip sync, but they didn't really pick all the winners. Yeah. Like it was like a mix. It's like they already knew kind of who they wanted. Yeah. So it's like you already know who you want in the finale. Why are you making this girl lip sync? Telling them like we want to hear from you how bad you want it, so we're not gonna make y'all lip sync against each other. Like it makes no sense. At least last season, it was like truthful to like y- like you're gonna lip sync against each other. I think what they should and have done. One of you is gonna stay. One of you is gonna go. I I, I wanted that. To they happen. should have done that. They should have just rigged it. They should have been like paper. You're with someone who's going home. Fifi, you're with someone who's going home. And then uh, we'll we'll double save for Santa so that there can be a top four. That's that's how or it should have happened. They could have made her win a lip sync because she's yeah. she's won every lip sync she's done in. In the, paper, I think maybe edged her out in that lip sync, but it was the closest one. So you could have easily been like, oh, th- these two both have to make it to the finale. Yeah, that, I think their lip that's sync was the been. most the, the most the one that was the most close because all the other ones you could kind of tell like yeah, Fifi and Liza. Liza was a, I think winner of the lip sync. And, yeah, I agree. Uh, Hidden and what's well, her name? Hidden Greta. and Greta. And I, I feel like Hidden was the winner. I actually kind of felt like Greta won that, which was surprising to me because Hidden's lip sync have been so good. But I did think Greta kind of won that lip sync. It's weird well, they made they made me like none so, of them won. So. I know none of them won. <laughs> they made me so invested in Greta getting to the finale after like three or four episodes after of me being like, like I oh, want her to go home. Girl, but now I want her to go home. Now she yeah. like she ended so strong. I'm almost mad she didn't get to go to the finale. It's like, girl, you were already there, mm. like almost there. Well, a lot of mixed feelings tonight, as you can tell. We are told that the winner of the challenge is Fifiesta, which we agree with. She's going to the finale. Then we're told it's going to also be Paper. And then we're told it's also going to be Santa. And then right away. And also Liza. Also Liza. Like, also Liza (laughs) right away. Like, we can't even celebrate. It, like, happens so fast. It was so weird. I don't know what they were trying to do with the editing. Like, you know, it just seems like... Hmm. Yeah. So Do you agree with the top four? I think this is a perfectly fine. The, like throughout the season and based on this challenge, do you think that the top four makes sense to you? I think based on these final six that we ended with, this is kind of the top four I would want. I would I would move heaven and what earth. Was your, what was your I would top move, four from all of them? I mean, Peke would be there. Of course. I mean, Peke could have, no offense, because I do think this is a really strong top four. I would give Lysa's spot to either Peke or Hidden. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with this mm-hmm. final four. How yeah. we got there was really weird, but... Yes. How we got there is insane. <laughs> like, it's such a weird, like, machine season, to go through season, to get this top four. <laughs> and I think with all... Just, like, in all... Comparing this season to other seasons, I feel like this is the most produced one that you it can tell. It felt very produced. So produced. Yeah. It's so produ- produced and they're pushing storylines and it's so clear. Yeah. Compared to like other seasons, maybe it's because they were bad at editing before, you know. But like, I I just feel like the producers are creating a machine mm. and they're just like now like fully on pulling everything and like you can tell what's happening. Yeah. Before we go into the final twist of the episode, let's have a brief. Let's have a little debriefing. Obviously, we have not seen the reunion or the finale yet, but we have a pretty good idea of how this season went. Early on, we were really, really hyped on it. We were like, this is maybe the strongest season ever. And then I think the back half, when we started noticing some of these production issues, it lowered a little in our esteem. The thing is, is... You know, where they, like, tried and pushed the girls who were, like, more quiet and timid and, like, you know, kind of... What they did is they got rid of every single person with the big personality out right from the beginning. Like it was like. You, Luckily, you, we had you, Uma for you. half the season because Uma really like. I mean, I injected honestly, a lot of personality. I, into it. if they would have pushed Uma to be a top four, I would have been so happy. I'm all for that. I yeah. literally would have been so happy because it's like that's a type of it's a reality TV show before it's a competition. It's like they know what it is, and so the fact that they were like kind of doing that to themselves of like literally removing everyone so that it became boring to me because i was like i feel like these girls are not giving they're just they're they're competing but they're not giving reality tv so with that in mind where does this rank in the la mastraga canon for you uh oof i mean i i think because it's still so recent i cannot give it a low i already know 
Um, okay, so top one, I think, is between season three and season... F- actually, season two. Two, two Sorry, and four. season two and four. Yeah. And then three, and then one, and then... I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I would... Well, the thing is, like, I love all the other ones because there was so much more that they gave. So I feel yeah. like this would be... Actually, I oh god, am I? Is really, it your least favorite? Is my least favorite. Wow. Oh my god, I I don't think that's true. This would be right in the middle for me because, as we've discussed a couple times, I've never finished season three. Wow. I'm sorry, I'm a terrible fan. It was just they were talking over each other so much, and there was no subtitles, and that's I got really great confused. about it. Like, season three is the one with the most. I know, and I got confused. Like, I got confused. So much drama. <laughs> so yeah, I would put it in the middle. Um. Because for me, this this is like the nice production value. Well, rank them. What? Rank them. I will. I would say season four is my favorite. Okay. Season two is my second favorite because even though it's not as produced, it has sort of the most talent and some of the best storylines. Yes. And then I would put this one because it reminds me of four. The production is very high. I agree with your but ranking. The the story producing is not as good. The cast is still good, just the story producing. Not all the way there this season. Actually, no. I would put it fourth place. But even okay. then, like, season one is so good, so I don't think why... I don't know why I would rank it so low. But one... Except that there's some things there that I don't like, actually. So no, it'll be my fifth. One is hard. It's just shorter. It's fewer queens. They didn't really know what they were doing yet. I, I Half sort of, of the cast goes to the finale. <laughs> that's true. I sort of begrudgingly put season one at the bottom. I don't think it's season one's fault that it's at the bottom. That's I think it's just... Season five is a... Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so... No, I feel like half of the season was great. And yes. then it just kind of... I don't know where it went. And I got lost. And I was trying to catch up. And, you know... Well, you got COVID. Well, then I got sick. <laughs> because, of I, because I was watching the show. Yeah, you got COVID from watching the show. So there's one final twist before we cut away. A final twist? You don't remember it? <gasps> what? <laughs> so we see our final four in their promo looks. We got a couple greens. We got one white one, one red one. Oh, but what's this? A gold one in the middle. Who With could that be? Mark. With a question mark. So it looks like we're going to have a full season 14 fantasy. <laughs> a top five. And have a top five. For the five. first time in Drag Race history. <laughs> I... It's Greta. I think it's hidden. It's based Greta. on the silhouette. I think it's hidden. It's literally look at the silhouette again. It's Greta. If it's Greta, they love Greta. They obviously literally love like Greta. they love they Greta. They love like Greta. never sent her home, and she, when she was supposed to be in the bottom, she was never in the bottom. Like it's Greta. If it is Greta, that's fine. I won't begrudge them. I, just I would think want it to be hidden. I would rather be Peke. I would rather be the. We were reading Peke. the comments when we were watching live. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, then people were saying the sales. You know, like, yeah, the, the sales is the secret yeah. one. As like, girl, comes she back, got, wins the whole season. Yeah, it comes back after like being in the middle <laughs> of the first episode and just wins everything. Well, maybe it'll be obvious. <laughs> She's the. <laughs> that was another joke people queen, made. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think in general, this is kind of what we were talking about last week with like double saves and like not being that exciting anymore yeah there has to be a certain level of like ruthlessness with like these reality shows it's a reality show it's exciting when at no matter what even if you love six people in the room you know two of them are going home at the end of the episode it's that's exciting it'll make you feel stuff you might feel bad but it's kind of like what's happening with drag race as well where like you know that even if a girl is good and she faulted, like, you have to send her home. And, like, now they're like, oh, I'm keeping you. And because we like, have this story planned for Yeah, you. like, yeah. we already have a storyline for you, produced, so we can't send you home. But you fucked up, girl. So, like, you, yep. you know, it's like, they're, it's like a handout. And it's like, it doesn't leave that, like, energy of, like, holy shit, the best one is gone. Yes. You know, like... And I think that's why. And I, I was love... sad when Peke went, but at least I felt something, you know. Yeah, and I, I, I definitely that's why I liked UK versus the world. Yeah. Because it was like Pangina just sobbing yeah. uncontrollably. Also, Pangina like getting the Canadian girls <laughs> out right away was the funniest was shit ever because now it's such a great joke. <laughs> so I guess we'll have to wait for next week to see who it is. Uh, bunch of talented girls this season. So if who someone do you want to be the winner. Of the next La Mas Draga, season five. I am going to sound like such a boring, boring person because I've been <sighs> saying it all season, but I think it's Fifi's season. What do you think? 
I mean, anyone at this point from that top four. Um, but I feel like I would like to make people piss off. So I want Santa Lucia, which I have also been rooting for her from the beginning. We and love Santa Lucia. Yeah. In terms, like I just mentioned earlier, like she's the one that's really shown us who she is. Yeah. In terms of like, she's able to still keep her energy in every challenge. So I, I, I think I would want Santa Lucia to win. Honestly, I already said paper cutting is not deserving of winning, even though be, they're paper he's deserves great. to be in the finals. He but deserves to be in the final. We have to grade him on a curve, you yeah, know. Exactly, like it's like you have to grade them like Drag Race does, where it's like if you're good, we're gonna, you know, expect, expect that much expect more, a of lot you. more from yeah. you than like some other queen. So I I would not expect, or I'm not expecting Paper Cut to win. I am so excited Paper is there. I can't wait to see what he does but on think, the stage. I think but the he does final, I think the final lip sync is gonna be between Lysis and Sus. Or there's not a final lip sync here, but um, the final two are gonna be Lysa and Fifi. So I think it's between them two. I think you're probably right. Yeah, because I feel like. I hate people that send hate to queens, but I feel like Santa Lucia is so beat down at this point, probably, that I don't think she even wants to try and, like, prove, disprove people. I think, you know, she had to delete all of her social media since she's been, like, you know, dealing through a lot of hate, and that's so fucked up. Yeah. And... uh, Uh, If you're, by chance, someone who loves La Mastraga and watches all of the review videos, so you happen to have clicked on ours, and you're also a La Mastraga fan who sends mean messages to people... I would just like to personally ask you to stop because it's not making you any happier and it's really ruining this person's life and she's a really talented artist, so that bums me out. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why I think I'm expecting the final two to be Lysa and Fifi. I think that they're the contenders to look out for. That sounds about right. You don't think this fifth girl's going to swoop in and be... <laughs> I don't care honestly I'm like i'm like i'm done with the, if? i'm done with the strings that this production has done like they're trying no, to literally annoying. every episode they're trying to end it with that bang of like yeah. oh 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 like oh this queen walked off stage oh these two queens are like both staying oh we're gonna bring an eliminated eliminated queen and a bottom queen and then they're all still gonna stay oh everyone was so great in the challenge no one is going like every single fucking end of the episode they tried to end with like a so produced and you know they did the same thing tonight again sure hear me out the fifth girl we see the gold silhouette it's a girl standing like this it's rupaul no someone comes out from behind another gold silhouette it's isa and kata (laughs) 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 they're like "Ah, like, six girls in the finale no 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 it's like they're like their faces are like this so they're creating one silhouette like Honestly, that would be a hell of a look. <laughs> if you could make two phases into one phase. Yeah. Let's try it. No. All right. Well, well there's a microphone. Mic in front of us. Well, we can't do it. Who do you want to win? <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> I want world peace to win. Uh, no, I think I want Santa Lucia to win, which I did already say. I would like if Santa Lucia won. I think that would be a, a very fun story. Yeah. I think she's different than yes. some of the previous winners. I think she's winners. a clear winner to me in terms of exactly of diff- being like. Aula Rebel Mork is kind of already on that same spectrum, but... Well, speaking of Rebel Mork, uh, she's proved positive that you don't have to be the front runner going into <laughs> the finale to win. I thought you were going to say win. that she was not going to go return the crown. I <laughs> see if it was going to show up. <laughs> yeah, they've just fully edited Rebel Mork out of the show. <laughs> yeah. No, um, Rebel Mork has proven to us that you don't have to be the front runner to win the season. Exactly. So, so anyone can win. It's up- any one of these five or maybe six girls could win the season. <laughs> What if only Issa won? I <laughs> just one of the girls. <laughs> only yeah. one of the twins. Wins. Uh, okay. Well, on that note, um, we're gonna go ahead and skip the reunion. Sorry, this episode's a week late, but we will be with you for the finale. Thank you for watching all season with us, and um, we love you. Love you. Wow.